In this video, we're going to look at integration by parts. This is a topic you learned back in a calculus class, and you probably have used very little since. So I want to remind you of how integration by parts works and how we use it. I'm actually going to derive it two different ways. And the reason is because it plays a very important role in the calculus of variations. We're going to use this quite extensively. We're going to derive the integration by parts formula two different ways. One is in the 1D context, the way we normally learn it and use it. And then we're going to drive it using the 2D form of integration by parts, which is the divergence theorem, and show that the 1D version of the divergence theorem actually gives us the same integration by parts formula. So it's based on the product rule of differential calculus. So let's say we have two functions, p of x and q of x. And if we take the derivative with respect to x, we use the product rule. It's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. If we then integrate both sides of this expression with respect to x, on the left we have pq, and that's equal to the integral of p dq dq with respect to x, plus the integral of q dp dx with respect to x. But dq dx dx, well that's just the total differential of q. Likewise dp dx dx, well that's just the total differential of p. So we can rewrite this as dq and this as dp. So if we just flip this around, we'll have that p dq is equal to p times q minus q dp. And that's the integration by parts formula. Now if we have a definite integral over an interval in x from x0 to x1, then the integrals reflect those limits of integration. And the pq term then is evaluated at the endpoints x0 and x1. And this is the form that we're going to be using the integration by parts formula in the context of the calculus of variations. Now the reason why this is so useful is because you'll notice what it does. It moves derivatives from one part of the integrand to the other part. So here we have the integral of p times dq, whereas here we have, don't forget the minus sign, the integral of q dp. So we've moved the derivative off of the q and on to the p. And that's how we're going to use integration by parts throughout our discussion of variational methods. Okay, now let's look at a second approach to deriving that same formula. So this is using the divergence theorem of vector calculus. This is a very powerful theorem. It applies in two dimensions, x and y, so over areas. And then we're going to apply it in the 1D case where the functions are only functions of x. And you'll see we get back the same integration by parts formula. So let's say we have a situation where we have a bounding curve C, which bounds the area A. DS is a little differential piece along the curve C. And then N is going to be the normal vector that's everywhere normal to that curve C. So as we go around, it's always going to be normal. OK, so here's the divergence theorem. It's also known as Gauss's theorem. So it relates an area integral, so that's a double integral over x and y over an area of the divergence of a vector field, del dot v. So del is the gradient operator dotted with, so the dot product with a vector v integrated over an area. So that's an integral of the divergence within the area A. And that's equal to the integral around the curve C. Now this little loop-de-loop -loop here means that we're going to integrate around the closed contour C that bounds the area A. And it's the integral of v dot n ds. So ds means we're integrating around our curve C. And then v dot n, there's a vector field right across here. You take the dot product of a vector with a unit vector. And that gives the component of the vector v in the direction of the unit vector, in this case, n. So as we take that dot product, it's everywhere normal to the curve c, because it's n. And so this is summing up the, all those normal components of v. So this is summing up the divergence inside the domain. And this is summing up the v dot n, the normal component of v, all the way around the bounding curve c. Now I could get into the significance of that and how powerful that is and what it means in physical situations. I'll leave that to another video. But this is the divergence or Gauss's theorem. And it applies to any vector v. So let's say that our vector v is psi times del phi. Psi and phi 
are both two-dimensional scalar functions. They're arbitrary at this stage. And let's just designate that, it's, that v is psi times the gradient of v. And then let's evaluate the dot products in the integral on the left and the right. On the left, we have the divergence, so del dot v. So del dot of psi del phi. The del operator, that's the gradient, so that's derivatives. So we use the product rule. So that is psi times del dot del phi. Del dot del is del squared phi. And then del psi dotted with del phi. So product rule. So that's the first times the divergence of the second plus the second times the divergence of the first. And that's what you see here. Now v dot n. V again is psi del phi, so that's psi del phi dotted with n. So let's substitute those into the left and right hand sides of those integrals. So on the left we have the del dot v, so we get this term and this term here and here, those are the integral terms. And then on the right we have the integral over c of v dot n. Well v dot n is this expression, so we have that here. That's known as Green's first theorem, and that's also a general theorem in vector calculus. In this form, it applies to phi and size functions of x and y, but let's look at the 1D case where they're only functions of x. In that case, the gradient vector is just d dx i, there's only one component, and zero is minus i, so that's at the x zero at the left end, and n one is i, so that's at x one, at the right end. And then our area, dA, is now just dx. So if you put in those simplifications, this term becomes this, this term becomes these two. Those are the only two endpoints of our one-dimensional domain at x0 and x1. And then this area integral becomes this x integral. So how do we relate this back to our p's and q's? Well, these two functions, psi and phi, I can make them related to the p's and q's however I want. So let's set psi to be q and phi to be the integral of p dx. So if phi is the integral of p dx, then d phi dx is just p. So if you look at this first term, d phi dx, well, that's just dq dx. And d phi dx, well, that's just p. So this first term becomes the integral of p dq. These two terms together are the p times the q evaluated at the endpoints. So p times q evaluated at the endpoints. And then finally this one minus the integral of psi. Well psi is just q. And d squared phi dx squared, well that would just be dp dx. So that's minus the integral of q dp. Therefore, we see that the one-dimensional application of the divergence theorem does indeed result in the integration by parts formula.